So good morning, y'all. I am in the car, and today I'm gonna to talk about why, why being gay is not a good thing for society. This is a world. This is a world. This is a world. This is not really an academic exercise. This is really thinking about the way I see things exercised in the world. To have power means to have the ability to cause, right? To cause things to happen. Like the sun has power because it, you know, allows things to grow, right? That's power. Uh, without the sun, those things wouldn't grow. Without the sun, you know, we'd freeze to death, right? So there's a power. We understand that power has an effect on the other, right? Has an effect outside of itself. The power to build a house, you know, we t we those bricks aren't the house is not going to get built on its own. So it takes it requires you know a will or it requires a force to make that thing happen, and that's power. So to have power in a ruling class, let's say, let's call it a ruling class, that ruling class needs to exercise their will on others to have an effect that would not have happened without their being, which in some way requires almost that there be rules that are in some ways arbitrary just to <laughs> test that that power truly exists. So to have certain things happen that would not happen without the presence of that ruling force. So I know that this sounds like a, a far way to go to talk about why being gay is bad for society, but I hope that you'll just be patient and just go with me here. So when we're talking about the needs of the individuals in that society, those aren't necessarily what are being addressed. Those aren't necessarily what are being protected when we talk about the rules and the regulations that are imposed on that society. So there is gonna be a certain amount of things that are just imposed. And then we start to think about, you know, who benefits from the particular regulations? Because although they may seem arbitrary, um, it's probably more logical to assume that there is going to be someone who is benefiting from those particular rules. And we should assume that the person who is going to benefit, if it is not the individual members of that society or even the society as a whole, that the beneficiary of any of those rules or regulations are going to be the ruling class themselves. I hope this makes sense. So then we look at our society and, we, and our society is an industrialized society or a technological society, but still in many ways shaped by the values of industrial society. And that industrial society requires the reproduction of certain relationships in order to continue. So, you know, we can talk about capitalism, but we don't even have to use big words. We could just say, you know, for things to continue to be produced, we need people to produce them. We need people to consume them. Um, and without that continued growth of people to produce and people to consume, or at least people to consume, at least people to consume, that society will fail. And so you have this push to, you know, create this, you know, cherished, you know, <laughs> you know, the, the, the gold standard of life, which is the nuclear family, right? Which is, you know, a mother and a father and 2.5 children and a dog, right? So we need that. We need that institution to be strong and strongly in place and to exist without question in some ways. Um, and even if we don't need that institution in place, again, when we're talking about the arbitrary regulations in a society, the ruling class says that that is what we should have in place. We want a nuclear family in place, right? With 2.5 children. It's not 10 children. It's not zero children. It's 2.5. And so in order to instill in us these values in order to institute this 
this tradition of the nuclear family in the 14, 15, 16, even as late as the 1700s, we saw the persecution of females to take control of their reproductive systems. And it went as far as burning women at the stake who weren't willing to submit to this standard of life, to this rule put in place by the ruling class in an understanding that that is what would be necessary for industrial society to succeed, for industrial society to progress. At least that's what seems to have happened. And that's what seems, and that's where we, we go from this tradition of, you know, the tradition, the pro-life tradition started as, you know, the, the witch hunts. The desire, the need to control the reproductive systems of women was so important to someone that society, the church even, was willing to get on board with the persecution of women to the point of burning them at the stake to set an example to make sure that women were pushed into a certain position in society. And so the role of women was made very clear. And the role of men in society has been made very clear. And for, a, or for our industrial society to succeed and to continue to progress, right, even to our detriment, these roles have to go without question. These roles have to go without question. And so then we have this idea of an orientation that exists outside of heteronormativity. We have, you know, homosexuals, we have, you know, lesbians, we have transgender people, we have asexual people, we have pansexual people who defy the status quo, defy what has been deemed necessary for the success of industrial society. And those individuals suddenly, instead of becoming people, you know, just trying to have private lives, trying to pursue their happiness as they would, these people become threats to that society. And I believe that th that, that was something that was recognized before industrial society. There, I believe, have been, there has been a desire in societies to see growth, to see growth of their populations, the numbers of citizens as crucial for their survival. Whatever that means, right? Because who's to say that a society as, you know, as a, as a human race, we could just all be developing as a human race, right? We don't necessarily need to have these be, be broken into these groups and be organized into these, you know, huge nations. I believe that those huge nations have more to do with the egos of the individuals who run those societies, the ruling classes in those societies. But that's a whole other story. But it's likely been considered a necessity to have reproduction at the center of the development of societies for a very long time. But in industrial society, it became quite clear and the efforts to maintain that became quite overt to the point where we saw this violent campaign against women for hundreds of years that lasted for hundreds of years. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of women were made examples of to basically turn them into housewives, turn them into good housewives. And so again, we have these, these individuals that exist outside of that model who become a threat to society. And they're a threat to, to, to society in several ways. They're a threat to society, one, because of their, you know, they are, you know, they question, they ask questions. 
And it is so wrong to ask questions in a society because questions challenge rule. Questions are a challenge to the ruling class because their power is only demonstrated in the willingness for people to follow without question. They're a threat also because they represent creativity. And creativity means that someone might find a different way, a better way, another way. And we can't be in a society operating under the belief that there might be a way that this could happen differently. It's a threat to society. Another reason these alternative ways of these alternative orientations are a threat to society is they show a strength of character. They show that this is an individual who is willing to stand up and fight against the status quo. They are, you know, they're willing to go against public opinion to exercise their right to live as they see fit, especially when it's not um, harming anyone else. And obviously it's a threat to growth, right? To have people, it can be seen as a threat to growth, to, to have a, a group of individuals who aren't simply stepping into relationships in order to, you know, procreate, um, which is, which is, which is hypocritical because there are couples, there are heterosexual couples that, you know, aren't going to procreate for whatever reason. But the, 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 the alternative or the orientations that exist outside of heteronormativity are a threat to industrial growth. And so as we begin this struggle as we continue in this struggle against a society that in essence sees our very existence as a threat to its very existence. We have to move into that work in a very different way. We can't engage in this work under the assumption that what we're doing doesn't harm anyone because it does harm. It calls into question the authority of the ruling class. It is a threat to the continuance of industrial growth. It means that there are alternatives to what exists now that to some might be seen as better, more enriching, more rewarding. And so I want to start out this week in that place with that understanding that this isn't simply a question of people being nice this isn't just a question of people, you know, this isn't just a question of people, what people believe in terms of, you know, morality. It's not about morality. The morality has been shaped to fit the needs of the ruling class. The morality has been shaped to fit the needs of industrial society. That's, in some ways, that's what Protestant, Protestantism is about. It's about in shifting, a shifting of the spiritual world to fit capitalism to uh, instill a particular work ethic to instill a certain belief about the role of the individual in the maintenance of society so that is why being gay is bad <laughs> for society so I definitely want to know what you guys think. Um, you know, if you find anything that I've said offensive, please. I'm really totally open for discussion. And again, I'm just kind of thinking out loud with all of this.
And that's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself the world